News from Away with Jimmy and Seamus O'Toole. Happy New Year, my trout. This is our annual look back at the events of 2002. Hell's Angels made news this past spring. After years of bad press, they tried portraying themselves in a positive light. Unfortunately, their plan backfired when they were photographed with this man, the mayor of Toronto. 2002 saw Irwin Toy file for protection from its creditors. Company officials attribute their economic problems to poor choices from their new toy division, including Cold Sore Ken and Snakes and Weasels. This year, Jetsco Airlines started service to Timmins, Ontario. A nationwide search was immediately begun to find someone to fly to Timmins. In Vancouver, a public school teacher went on summer break as a man and came back as a woman. The bad news is sex change has caused a public outcry and may jeopardize his job. The good news is he now qualifies for maternity leave. Here's Jimmy with an in-depth explanation of the situation. What do you expect? It's Vancouver. <laughs> In other news, the long-awaited Romano report on health care was released. Its many innovative recommendations included a special new health card. Each time you go to the hospital, you get your card punched. After 10 visits, you get a free liposuction. <laughs> this year saw the collapse of Enron, Tyco, and WorldCom because of shady accounting by executives. Here was Seamus with his commentary. <coughs> You stupid, greedy bastards. <laughs> Good commentary, Seamus. Thank you, Jimmy. Very good commentary indeed. I worked on it all afternoon. <laughs> In Washington, D.C., the Federal Bureau of Investigation admitted to misplacing 449 guns and 184 laptop computers. Things got so bad, the FBI's 10 most wanted list is now missing criminals 4 through 7. Also in Washington, President George Bush announced every American would be eligible for a free smallpox shot. Which is as close to universal health care as the U.S. is going to get. Good call, Jimmy. Iraq's 12,000-page document on weapons of mass destruction went to the White House. The president's wife, Laura, condensed it into language George could understand. We have tape. That's a damn, that's a damn. I do not like that's a damn. Do you want to bomb Iran? I would rather bomb Saddam. I do not like him in Iraq. I do not like him on my back. I do not like him in a trifle. I do not like him with that stupid rifle. Do you like Afghanistan? I'd rather bomb that damn Saddam. The end. Time for your nap, George. Now we'll wrap up our look back at 2002 with our 52 weeks in 52 seconds. Nortel becomes first stock to be sold at Dollar Store. Britain says no to cloning. Two words, royal family. Yasser Arafat's compound battered by tanks. PLO leader introduced to the joys of open concept living. Norwalk virus attacks Disney cruise ship. Passengers left singing, hi ho, hi ho, I really, really, really have to go. <laughs> Quebec government extends full parental rights to homosexual couples. Bon homme, ecstatic. Saddam Hussein's mistress reveals herself. This explains why Burke is so popular. Kmart files for bankruptcy. Company president hired as Walmart greeter. Favorite 2002 holiday song for Whitney Houston, I'm snorting a white Christmas. Ottawa roundup, Stockwell Day, rides jet ski into sunset. Jean Chrétien announces retirement. Joe Clark announces retirement. Alexa McDonough announces retirement. It's a start. Canada's men's and women's Olympic hockey teams win gold, forcing Americans to learn new phrase. We're number two. And that's your news from away. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. The following is a public service announcement. Do you live in a country whose leader has passed his best before date? Do his policies seem to smell a bit odd? Are you sure what he's saying is in the country's best interest? Are you sure what he's saying? Here are the early warning signs that your prime minister has overstayed his welcome. He begins to irritate small children. He becomes obsessed with resigning. 
I am the leader of the party. I'm the leader of the party until I resign. And I'll resign the day that I will resign. He develops an unusual fascination with pastries. <laughs> he will not accept the truth. Oh, he's a friend of mine. He's not a moron at all. He invents new words. If there's some problem with fraud, you know, we'll arrest those who are frauding. These are the early warning signs that your prime minister may have passed his expiry date. If you need further proof... I don't know. A proof is a proof. What kind of a proof? It's a proof. A proof is a proof. And when you have a good proof, it's because it's proven. <laughs> Al-Qaeda, how may I direct your call? Bin Laden, he's out not being dead. Can I take a message? Fine, call back. Al-Qaeda, al Ahmed and Akbar? No, they're currently on vacation in Guantanamo Bay. Very good, I'll transfer to their voicemail. Al-Qaeda, your call is important to us. Accounts receivable? Please hold. Just leave it on the counter. You have to sign for it. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Al Qaeda? No, that's Hezbollah. You want 1555 nut bar. <laughs> Al Qaeda? Abu Shihab the bomber? Yes, he's in. <laughs> no, he just left. <laughs> I am going for coffee. Al-Qaeda, please hold. Do you want anything, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Could I have a low-fat latte, please, club sandwich, and hold a goat? Hmm. <laughs> Thank you for holding, Al-Qaeda Credit Union. Who shall I say is calling? The CEO of Nortel. Uh, <laughs> uh, Seems to have a bad connection not coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Any messages, Kevin? Hey, boss. Yeah, uh, your wife called. Uh, your other wife called. Your alternate wife, your different wife. That chick from Yemen you're seeing with the mustache. Uh, the BMW dealership. And someone asking if you want a subscription to the National Post. If anyone else calls, uh, should I tell them you're dead? Uh, no, tell them I'm living in Mississauga. It's the same thing. <laughs> Man's World with that macho man, mmm, Buck McSweeney. Yo, audience. Yo, Buck! Right. Okay. My guest today is a real manly guy, Deputy Prime Minister John Manley. <laughs> Yo, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Yo, John. Yeah, hi, Buck. Yo, John. Yo, Buck. Right. John, you're a deputy prime minister, finance minister, you've been foreign affairs minister, infrastructure minister, and western economic diversification minister. You ever do anything interesting? What do you mean? Synchronized swimming. It's a man's sport, John. You get to swim upside down while wearing a cute little flowered bathing cap and day glow nail polish on your toes. No, I can't say I've ever done that. And you call yourself manly. <laughs> All right, on your little web page, it says the Prime Minister appointed you chairman of the Ad Hoc Cabinet Committee on Public Safety and Anti-Terrorism. What exactly does that mean? I'm an important guy. <laughs> right. Now, you've also worked with U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell. During those intense work sessions, 
Did you two ever get the urge to put on a colorful one-piece spandex bathing suit, throw on some blue eyeliner, jump in the pool, and do little corkscrews with your feet? What are you talking about? Synchronized swimming. It's a tough, physically demanding sport, especially the bikini waxing. Now that is wicked. Have you ever considered counseling? Good idea. Buck, I'm here to talk about politics. I welcome a frank and open discussion of my position on the issues. Ask me anything. Okay, okay. Why did you suggest the monarchy was not necessary in Canada's future? Next question. <laughs> right. John Manley, this past year you made some dynamic public appearances. Let's look at some highlights. Should the government of Canada pay for visibility or should it not? I think we should have an independent ethics counselor for journalists. <laughs> Wow, that last clip was poetry in motion. Funny, I don't remember that press conference. <laughs> so what does uh, John Manley do in his leisure time? Buck, I love marathon running. All right, since you are a long distance runner, I know you're a great admirer of the winner of the Boston Marathon, Rogers Rop from Kenya. Well, guess what? He is here today. John Manley, if you were to become Canada's next Prime Minister, what would your priorities be? Well, gee, I haven't really given it much thought. But if I were Prime Minister... <laughs> I would help those who have difficulties surviving day to day, like single-parent families and the Federal Conservative Party. If I were... Prime Minister, I would consider paying down the national debt with Canadian tire money. I would make all tax returns scratch and win. If I were Prime Minister, I would put some excitement into the House of Commons by making it mandatory to sing show tunes during question period. If I were Prime Minister, I would extend an olive branch to the West. I would go to Alberta with the Kyoto Accord and explain all the big words to Ralph Klein. <laughs> and finally, if I were Prime Minister, I would allocate more funding to essential pursuits like defense and national security. And? And synchronized swimming. <laughs> John, you're okay. was a year of highs and lows. The lows were courtesy of the unrelenting tabloids, and the highs were provided by Prince Harry, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it captured some of the memorable moments of the year in my personal scrapbook, The Buckingham Bunch. <laughs> in June, a concert was given to celebrate my golden jubilee it was truly a night fit for a queen. <laughs> That's me on the left. In October, he dropped a puck at a Vancouver Canucks game. Hockey is cruel, brutal, and painful. Much like having tea with Camilla. <laughs> However, he did feel a real bond with the players. It's almost like we share something in common. <laughs> Last November, he wrote a letter declaring that Princess Diana's butler, Paul Burrell, was innocent of all theft charges. To thank me, he went public with our family's darker secrets. Since then, he have written a couple of new letters for Mr. Burrell. <laughs> I 
was delighted when my late mother left me her most cherished possession, her hip. Her tragically hip. <laughs> but my biggest highlight this year was seeing the joy on my dear husband, Prince Philip's face, when he showed me his newest hobby, balloon sculptures. This is a dog. <laughs> this is a giraffe. <laughs> but the one that seemed to bring Philip the most enjoyment was this. <laughs> Ew. So that's what happened to my blue dress. <laughs> well, that's the kind of year I've had. I just hope next year is better because, frankly, 2002 was another royal pain in the anus for riblis. <laughs> This January, the East Coast Drama Awards. Classic celebrated dramas in fresh, electrifying interpretations. Hi, my name is Emma McDonald from Gabros, Cape Breton, and I would like to perform my version of A Long Day's Journey in Tonight. So I can count on your support? Good. Oh, hello. I guess a lot of you have been wondering what happened to Paul Martin since I was kicked out of, uh, resigned from the cabinet. <laughs> well, I've been busy crisscrossing the country, meeting with Canadians and getting out the Paul Martin word. I've been to more places than a hooker with a Winnebago. <laughs> Here to help me tell you where I've been is my trusted associate, campaign manager Dave. I've crossed this country from Chester to Chilliwack, meeting party faithful, discussing issues, while quietly stabbing the other candidates in the back. <laughs> I've had more rubber chicken dinners than even Colonel Sanders could possibly stand. <laughs> Why do I do it? Why do I go through it? Because I'm a campaigning man. I'm a campaigning man, traveling across this great land, by airplane, bus and boat. I'm begging for your vote, kissing baby, shaking hands, making Canada understand. I'm a campaigning man. I've been to Kettleby, Digby, Fairney, Grimsby, Napanee, Langley, Whitby, Rimby, Mooseney, Priestley, Sydney, Shakutami, Tomogamy, Gimli, Luxin, Bretony, Vagerville, Churchill, Morrowville, Beaverville, Woodville, Buttonville. What a thrill! I'm a campaigning man, traveling across this great land. My airplane, bus, and boat. I'm begging for your vote. Shaking babies, kissing hands, making Canada understand. I'm a campaigning man. Can't believe I'm doing all this just to be Prime Minister. Stratford, Hafford, Meaford, Bradford, Old Bay, Squamish, Cavendish, Garnish, Cowdridge, Wawa, Pepperloff, Florida. Florida. Snowbirds. <laughs> Barrel, dildo, gotta go. I'm a campaigning man traveling across this great land. My airplane, bus, and boat. I'm begging for your vote. Got charisma to spare. I'm the best thing since Pierre. I'm a campaigning man. So, as you can see, we <laughs> Richmond, Rice Lake, Rockport, Rustico, Baysville, Bathurst, Bedford, Bella Coola, Region, and Puff Cajun. I'm a campaigning man traveling across this great land. My airplane, bus, and boat. I'm begging for your vote. Kissing babies, shaking hands, making Canada understand. I'm a campaigning man with a plan to arrive at 24 Sussex Drive. From 24 Sussex Drive, a New Year's Eve interview with the Prime Minister and Sandy Ronaldo. Good evening. Lloyd is sleeping it off tonight. <laughs> I'm chatting with Prime Minister Chrétien. Happy New Year's, everybody! <laughs> Prime Minister, 2002 was a landmark year for you. You ratified the Kyoto Accord. You committed Canadian peacekeepers to the war on terrorism. Increased security screening on our borders took the first steps towards revamping our healthcare system. 
represented Canada's interests at the G8 meetings and went to Prague to renew our commitment to NATO. And best of all, I got to meet the Irish singer Boner from Me Too. <laughs> you too. That is what I am saying. Prime Minister, do you plan to take a less active role in government in 2003? Well, if I did, I do not know how you could tell. <laughs> so look, Madame Retardo, I, I do not consider myself a Prime Minister who is a lame dork. Uh, I am not uh, just going to fade into Bolivia. What kind of legislation would you like to see passed before the end of 2003? Uh, first of all, I would make 2003 five year long. <laughs> that way I could weasel into retiring slow like. But me, I am also interested in my legacy. Legacy? Yeah, that too. <laughs> I would like to help the underprivileged. And how would you do that? By give them more privilege. <laughs> Allow them to go on golf course and carry my club and bag. And you know, that would create jobs too. Well, what about education? Oh, no thanks, I am already smart enough. <laughs> For the children. Oh, well, sand trap. School is very important for children, especially if you want to teach them some things. Education, well, that is a different matter. If kids do not have the right learning tool, you cannot teach them anything, no matter how much education they ask. I, I don't follow you. Maybe you should have stayed in school longer like me. You know, sandbag. Me, my bottom line is I want to do things that I will be remembered for. Oh, you'll be remembered all right. <laughs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Bonne année à tout le monde! Crown Regal on the rocks, please. And a Dubonnet for my seeing eye dog. Now they say when you're blind, all your other senses are heightened. Yes, it's that good. He's not really blind, just uncoordinated. Now with the last word on tonight's news, here again, Ken and Christine. And now the cat sleeps on the dog's back during long family trips. Oh, that's something. <laughs> yeah, isn't it though, huh? Yeah. How come every night this year we had to tag our report with one of these insipid human interest stories? Gee, I don't know. We're hired to read the news, not think about it. Well, I guess that's the problem right there, isn't it? Too much reading, not enough thinking. <laughs> well, that's the way we saw 2002. So, like the old song says, should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. <laughs> you got that right, darling, I'll tell you. Huh? And given the odious contempt for the public purse, this liberal dictatorship that passes for a democracy has shown the country in the last year. I'm on that, should old acquaintance be forgot, page in bold type with a Helvetica font, darling. You're losing me. Are you folks at home as tired of hearing the same old swill as I am a reading it? Are you? Are you? Are you tired of being shoveled the same dime store spin from that cabal of money-grubbing liberal glad-handers who pilfer our surplus with unconscionable impunity? A billion dollars lost in the HDRC? A missing 1.4 billion in GST rip-offs? One billion over budget in Allen Rock's self-serving gun registry that can snatch and tax a 70-year-old rural widow shotgun but keeps a semi-automatic Glock pistol in the hands of gangbangers for a mini-mall drive-by? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And meanwhile, my mother's been waiting 18 months for a bladder stapling. <laughs> because we need 15 billion to fix a public health care system that's been flatlining so long it's already hovering over its emaciated corpse, hidden for the bright light, shaking hands with dead relations. 
If they'd get that money back they blew on patronage appointments and had Gagliano cough up some of that coin he's partying with in Denmark, every man, woman, and child in Canada could have a triple coronary bypass whether they needed it or not. <laughs> And I'll tell you, please don't get me going about the armed forces. They need a couple billion or we'll be buying a poor bugger's body bags in bulk at Costco. Jesus, just bad enough they're sitting ducks keeping the peace. There's an oxymoron, hey? In war-torn cesspools with the best weapons a disinterested liberal caucus can buy. You try to tell an Afghani warlord to drop that AK-47 when you're pointing a government-issue Canadian tire slingshot at him. <laughs> oh, there's one thing, though, the liberals are doing right. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, legalizing marijuana. <laughs> The smoke and the big doobies, both the only way you'll ever make sense out of this friggin' government. <laughs> Happy New Year! Hello, my friends. Good to be back again. Hope you're ready to hear Canada's favorite country and eastern singer, because that's me, Red Clay. You know, I've been doing a lot of traveling since I got out of the rehab. And everywhere I went, I heard a story of an unusual piece of work from Prince Edward Island named Sister Lucille. It seems that while her students were hitting the books, Sister Lucille was, uh, hitting the students. Well, the old gal's heading to the slammer, and I've written a song about her. I hope you like it. I call it the Ballad of Sister Lucille. Whippin', spankin', smackin', whippin', spankin', smackin', look out, this sex nun's packin', she's got her whip a crackin', Lucy. She's back right out of her mind, religious nut of some kind, who likes to tan your behind, Lucy. She says she's on the level. I'm just driving out the devil. Red Clay's singing, why don't you just uh, beat it, sister? She scares each and every inmate. She'll smack them black and bluish, but not if they turn Jewish. Till discipline is now her fate. Save a spawn, Malachon, lock it up, tell it what you see. Stay an hour in the shower, keep it pure, just be sure that you don't drop the soap. With Hubert's Mike Ah, brilliant, concise, understated. My best ever letter to the editor of Homemakers Magazine. <laughs> As we anticipate the year 2003 strikes you're out, I believe it's appropriate to take a final look back at 2002. Let's start with the cinema. The big movie, Harry Potter and the License to Print Money. <laughs> The experience that is this film is not to be missed. $30 for admission, $40 for 10 cents worth of stale popcorn. And there's nothing I enjoy more than sharing a sticky, undersized seat in a theater of wall-to-wall eight-year-olds screaming at a decibel level that would make a space shuttle liftoff sound like a whisper. <laughs> Another blockbuster of the year? Spider-Man. The story of a man who fights crime while dressed as a spider. And the Toronto police thought they had an image problem. <laughs> One of the year's highest grossing films, Triple X, starring Vin Diesel, an actor named after a German car motor. <laughs> Was Triple X the right movie for Vin Diesel? Let's look. Can this man act or what? Not really, no. <laughs> But when it comes to good looks, well, he's no Freddie Prinze Jr. <laughs> ah, but here is a smart man who... No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, look! 
He is perfect for triple X. <laughs> A surprise hit at the box office was my big fat Greek wedding, adored by millions of women, usually dragging along my big fat pussy whipped husband. <laughs> the most talked about television show of 2002 was The Osbournes, featuring Ozzy, a burned out, perpetually confused personality who fried his brain on drugs and is permanently stuck in the 60s. I like him a lot. <laughs> also making news in 2002, Winona, five-finger discount rider. <laughs> Winona starred in such offerings as Girl Interrupted and Little Women, the kind of movie they play every waking moment on the Women's Television Network. <laughs> or as they now call it, what? <laughs> The channel that boasts a daily programming schedule comprised of saccharine-coated, unbelievable chick flicks like Girl Meets Boy, Girl Loses Boy, Girl Marries Boy, and Terminates His Sex Life Forever. <laughs> Along with The Sex Show with Sue Johansson, Canada's scariest grandmother. <laughs> Surrounded by a bunch of toys that would look dangerous even on a construction site. <laughs> and that's how I saw the past year. I'm Gilbert Smythe. Bite me. You and Inspector Ridgely reporting for duty, sir. Ridgely, welcome to our international team. Our assignment is to inspect Iraq for deadly weapons to ensure the future safety of our planet. You understand? I'm from Canada. Yes, I know. I assume you've been briefed? Oh, yes, sir. I never go anywhere without my underpants. <laughs> Ridgely, uh, uh, you do understand that as a member of the UN inspection team, it's your responsibility to detect illegal and dangerous weapons that could trigger an international war leading to an apocalyptic cataclysm that would end all life on this planet? Can you repeat the part that came after Ridgely? <laughs> Your job is to look for illegal weapons of mass destruction, Ridgely. Oh, right, right, boss. Weapons of illegal destruction. Mass destruction. That too, right. Mass destruction. You don't have to tell me twice, sir. I'll find those illegal aliens if I have to destroy the whole country. <laughs> look, Ridgely, your job is to look for illegal weapons of mass destruction. Okay? What about legal weapons of mass destruction? <laughs> I can't believe I gave up my job as PMO communications director for this. <laughs> Look, Ridgely, there's different kinds, okay? Uh, y y you've got your biological weapons like anthrax, smallpox, cheese whiz. <laughs> what? Cheese whiz. Oh, stuff's sticky, boss. Cheese whiz is really sticky. It'd be downright dangerous. Tell you what, Ridgely, you can look for the cheese whiz, too. Oh. Something wrong? I don't really like cheese whiz. Can I look for Skippy peanut butter instead? <laughs> look at me, will you? I'm only going to say this one more time, okay? So pay careful attention. You are a UN inspector. You are in Iraq. Hmm? The most dangerous place this side of Regina. <laughs> Your job is to look for illegal weapons of mass destruction, period. Have you got it? Good. Then get at it. Okay, I'll go then. Don't worry, boss. I'll destroy the entire mass of weapons, even if I have to go into Saddam's headquarters and take out all the cheese whiz myself. Good Lord, if that man can't get Saddam Hussein to break, nobody can. <laughs> to hear from the Member of Parliament for Kicking Horse Pass. Here's Dave Broadfoot. As a, as, a mem as a member of Parliament, there's no way you can avoid answering questions. Listen to the questions from the constituents of Kicking Horse Pass. How come the church can't find any priests who are not interested in sex? They could if they would start recruiting men who have been married for at least 15 years. <laughs> Here's another religious question. Shouldn't the government be funding the schools of all religious groups? 
I have put forward a better proposal, which is presently being considered by Parliament. There would be two minutes of ecumenical silence each day in each public school. During the silence, Jehovah's Witnesses could mind knocking on doors, <laughs> Hindu students mind bathing in the Ganges, Sikh students fondle their kirpans, Jewish students polish their mezuzahs, Muslim students prostrate themselves facing Halifax, <laughs> Catholic students confess in writing, Evangelical fundamentalists collect cash, Atheists wait in the no praying area. <laughs> Here's another question from Kicking Horse Pass. Mr. Member, why haven't you taken a stand on the existence of puppy mills in this country? I can't advocate switching to this source of energy until I know how many kilowatts of power a puppy mill is capable of producing. <laughs> Here's an urgent question. What are you doing about the federal government awarding million-dollar contracts to liberal companies who make contributions to liberal members of parliament? The prime minister has explained this far better than I could. When the liberal Anglophone and the liberal Francophone have both agreed to those contracts, we are showing to the rest of the country we are united, like two pod in the same pea. <laughs> Here's a question that asks if I'm feeling guilty about being overpaid. A good question deserves a good answer. That's not a good question. <laughs> and here's the final question. Everybody in the past has asked me about this one. Mr. Member, the leader of North Korea keeps his people on the brink of starvation while he builds nuclear bombs and spends millions of dollars on luxuries for himself. What's he trying to prove? What that North Korean leader's trying to prove is that being insane doesn't mean you can't have fun. Maybe getting rid of my gray hair was just what I needed. It's the new hair treatment just for losers. More than a hair color, it's a hair resuscitator. Gray hair is painted away in five easy hours. And it's enamel enriched, brings out a thicker, natural, hair-like look. I wonder how I did tonight. Would you like to come in? Oh, let's go. I am ready. Can't you speak? You haven't said a damn word all night. Well, forget it, loser. <laughs> just for Losers, the Resuscitator. Also available, just for losers for beards and nose hair. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicken Cannon Target of the Year, 2002. <laughs> Greetings to the Lens Iron Colonel Station. Some of my close friends call me, wait for it, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> for the past two months, headquarters has been swamped with your votes. Our twin cannons have had their mothballs removed and are ready to take on the top targets of 2002. Our first target for botching the deregulation of hydro and trying to turn Ontario into a have-not province, Premier Ernie Eves. <laughs> Ernie's never been the same since he split up with Bert. <laughs> Our ammunition, an armed scud chicken, Canada's favorite weapon of destruction. And when ready, fire. <laughs> Looks like Ernie's hit the re-election trail a little early. <laughs> Next is this country's most annoying duo, the Canadian Tire Couple. <laughs> Mr. 
I see one more handy dandy, easy to use, five in one, battery operated, pointless gadget. I'll go ballistic. In fact, let's go ballistic. Fire! <laughs> Now, that's what I call a useless pair of tools. <laughs> Your next choice, the entertainer who has been voted Father of the Year, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Hey, Mikey, don't look now, but you lost more than your nose. <laughs> Next target on our viewers hit list, Alan Rock. <laughs> Cabinet minister who set up the gun registry program that'll cost Canadians over a billion dollars. It'll go on costing taxpayers as long as the program is running. Alan, this chicken's for you. Fire! <laughs> Let's see you shoot off your mouth now. <laughs> all right, now comes the moment you've been waiting for all year. Your most requested chicken cannon target of 2002. A man who has refused to consider the Kyoto Accord, who has made Canada's lumber industry go soft. The man who wants to invade Iraq and will as soon as he finds an excuse. President George W. Bush. <laughs> Mission, the Iraqi oil, because he's determined to get his hands on it. A generous helping of Texas Range fertilizer. He's got plenty to spare. Uh, put in three horses worth. Some pretzels. And some scarios. Some smallpox vaccine, just to be safe. <laughs> Some Crawford barbecue sauce to spice things up. And of course, a sugar coating to make it all seem nice. And when ready, fire! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Tom Donnelly from Seattle, Washington, one of many Canadians and Americans who voted at airfarce.com to nominate W as our number one chicken cannon target of 2002. Tom will receive the new Air Farce video, Another Year of the Farce. And maybe a visit from the CIA. <laughs> Chicken Cannon, Canada just doesn't get